Hey everybody, I'm back. It's been a while since I posted anything. Uh, I've gone through a move, a uh, whole bunch of stuff finally getting settled down. New workbench, new house, no basement, so uh, still getting cramped. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm back. I'm, I'm going to do a series of electronics projects. Um, and today we're going to start with an LED clock uh, kit. And this is a good starter kit. I've already built one. Right there. Oh, it went. Of course, right when I turn it, goes to uh, the uh, temperature, and that's the date, and uh, that's the day of the week, uh, which means it's Thursday. And that's the time, and it's accurate, and it's good. So we're gonna build this bad boy here, this little project, and I'll keep this up here, and we're gonna time it. And I did build. Like I said, I have built it once already, and I started to build another one because. Uh, I, when I made the video, wasn't really happy with it. There was a lot of fumbling because I didn't understand what was going on. And hopefully, if you choose to do this, uh, you won't have the same problems. So let's open it up and see what we get. Um, 2233. We'll call it $2230. $8.93 shipped. Can you see that? $8.93. Uh, vigorous parts, 555. U.S. seller. Got it right away, just a couple of days. Uh, the old USPS. So, let's see if we can do this in two hours and three beers. Or less. Okay. Uh, these are all the acrylic pieces that make the case. This is a pain in the ass. Those are the two uh, ICs. Uh, let's see if we can read those. Let me read them. Uh, it's an STC 15W404AS and a DS1302. Uh, what those mean? I don't know. I see, I'm not in the light there. Maybe you see that. Anyway, and uh, it's got IC sockets, which is nice. Although these, uh, that's that's the second hardest part of the build. Well, third hardest part. Uh, that putting these these in the board, the LEDs, is the hardest part. Then this, and then the case. It comes with a power cord. It uses a regular USB uh, charger. So if you've got an old charger laying around, it doesn't take it any power really, uh, not much anyway. Uh, or if you've already got like a multi-plug uh, power supply, uh, that's great. Uh, it does have a battery in it, so if the power goes out, it comes right back. It has a temperature sensor and a light sensor, so it's uh, supposed to dim when it gets dark. No, no, I haven't even tested that. So, I don't know. There's our source of truth. Very nice, clean circuit board. Uh, completely labeled, believe it or not, even though I have a problem finding some of the things on here. And there are a few extra spots that... Uh, let's zoom in. There's a few extra traces, uh, holes and stuff on here for parts that don't exist. So be aware, you have some stuff that doesn't exist. Might not be easy to work around that. Uh, screws and stuff for the case. This is imperative. This film. You have to cut it a little bit to fit, but it makes these readable. Uh, these LEDs are readable, so you, you definitely want to keep that, that over there. And the instructions, which aren't instructions, <laughs> um, they don't tell you much. Uh, although they do have the schematic. Uh, there's the board. There's the LEDs. There's the schematic. Here's the important part. Uh, it tells you how to set this thing. It's not particularly, particularly not very intuitive. So. Um, you want to keep that. But I'll tell you how to do it here too. Pretty simple stuff. There's two little button switches. Okay. Put those out of the way. Uh, this is the uh, temperature doohickey. Four transistors, four transistors. These drive the uh, LEDs, I assume. We can look at the schematic, but I don't know if it matters that much. A crystal. Uh, 
How is it? 32768 crystal. It's a very common clock crystal, is my understanding. The photoresistor light sensor. <laughs> a buzzer beeper, which is awful. Do everything you can to turn that thing off. I may not even install I'll install it, but you should. It's stupid. A uh, couple of caps. I'm going to have to zoom out just a tiny little bit because that is tight. How about that? That's better. Uh, the battery holder. And I just so happen to have a bunch of those batteries. I had to buy them. Um, I'll talk about that when we get to the battery. The power jack. And some resistors. There's The first one I built, there was one extra resistor of each type. So don't be fooled. Uh, some 330 ohm and some 10 kilo ohm. All right. Let's move the fasteners out of the way. Let's see if this thing's heated up. We'll pretend it a bit here. Oh yeah. Yeah, let's get that heated up. All right. Let's get started here. What we're gonna do first, let's get that out of the way, let's get these out of the way. Please stay right there, buddy. Mm -hmm. We'll start with the resistors, we'll do the 330 ohm first. Uh, you read them this way orange, orange, black, black, brown, or something like that. And we need how many? Did you see that? These are blue, so they're harder to read, but it should be orange, orange, black. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need eight. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, there's nine on there. So we'll have one left over. It is marked on the paper, but I always like to test one of them. Just to make sure we're in the right ballpark. You see that right? 320. Close enough. All right. Now, here's what we do. Uh, you can pre-bend these. You see on there where those holes are? Just a skosh past. Okay. And I like to make them go all the same direction, but I'll pre-bend them first and we can fast forward to this. Put it in, bend it, next one. Doobly doo. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a great project to get started on, learning the solder. It's nothing particularly complicated. The hardest part of building this is getting the LED digits on and the, the, the chips in the sockets, they're, they're bent a little bit and it's screwy and it's angering.
He's this little helping hand this sort of thing. It's not a helping hand thing, it's a circuit board holder. Good. This is a helping hand. It's got the little arms on it. Uh, this is kind of cool because I can just rotate, put stuff in and rotate. So we'll use this for the time being. It's kind of cool. Hopefully we don't have much glare there. Is there glare? Should be fine. Okay, pretend the tip a little bit and it'll help it melt the solder. Touch it to the wire, briefly hit the other side of the wire, and go. Make sure you touch the pad and the wire at the same time. And that solder should melt right onto it real quick. Why is that one all bubbly? I don't like that. This back side of the board is where the digits are, so you don't want these to be all bumped up too high. They get in the way of the stuff that's supposed to go get mounted here. That one's done. All right, those are done. I'll just move them up here out of the way. And we'll get those 10K resistors in. How many do we have? Focus. Oh, it says 10K, trust me. One, six, seven. What? Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, one extra again. Ah, look at that. Things way, raised way up there. I need to fix that.
Not too bad. Not too bad. Alright, I'm going to cut all these little ends off here. Try and cut them close. Well, I'll show you on these. Because like I said, these LEDs are going here. Okay, capacitors, 22 ohm, okay you'll see on the board here, you should be able to see that, capacitor 4 and 5 are each 22 ohm, and this is 22, or not ohm, they're on picofarad or something, 22, good enough, right, uh, make sure you can read that, um, by turning them in a particular direction so you can see them. Okay. Make sure there's another one in here. Got two more. Capacitor 1, 104. That's this big one here. Focus. Oh, damn. Alright, so it's 104. Face it this way so we can read it easier. Are there any other capacitors? Because I have another 22. This is the spare. Pretty sure there's a spare capacitor in there. Way too pico ferret. Okay. Now reach under and spit them out. About a half hour in, half the components are done. It's not bad. This is the crystal. It's in a little can. Crystals are heat sensitive, so when we uh, solder this, we want to solder as quickly as possible so we're not lingering and leave some length on the leads so that it, uh, it's quick doesn't overheat it the accuracy of the crystal is going to be the accuracy of your clock so. Probably not touching, but I'd want to make sure, so I'm going to put some solder removal tape in there and just hit it real quick, just to make sure that it's ultra clean. Those holes are really close together. That's probably the hardest solder point. They aren't touching. 
Damn, you can't barely tell. Yep. They're apart, but by that much. Alright, so there's our crystal to push it down flat. And then we'll go to the transistors. Note, transistors have a flat side and a round side. Note on here, transistors are letter Q, and they'll show the flat side and the round side. So make sure you get them in right. Uh, you need to spread the legs a little bit. I like to rotate them in. And then push down to about there. All right? They'll do their own job of holding themselves in. See? Can't go anywhere. So they'll hang off the board a little bit, and that's okay. Uh, it's kind of weird. There's one here, one here, and then these two. So put the first pin in. Grab that second pin in. And then the third. Whoop -de -whoop. Again, transistors are heat sensitive, so you don't want to linger too long. Looking pretty good. All right, now we're going to do the photoresistor, <sighs> and the temperature resistor, or temperature sensor, I think it's a resistor. Now these need to go up and out of the case. The photo sensor, if you look here, this one I put way too high. So looking at it, I now know this needs to be about about that high. And the temperature doohickey, come on, which is this, that needs to stick up. some <laughs> um, and with these with these little glass it's always good to bend them by putting a pair of needle nose right up next to that glass like that and then bend over the needle nose so you're not putting pressure on the glass okay. and then we'll stick that in there and note this has a square pad usually that's a specific to positive or negative, I, I don't remember which, but uh, in this case I don't think it makes a difference because this doesn't seem to be keyed. Um, so we want it to stick up about that much. Could probably go a little less than that, but
Okay. I guess we should put these sockets on now. Note on the socket, this little notch, it's only on one end. Note on the circuit board, there's a notch. This helps you identify pin one. Also notice, square, square pad is pin one. The bottom of the notch, if you're looking at it this way. Alright, get those and boom, look at that. Alright, so now I'm going to huh. do some acrobatics here. Oh, they're good. This is the buzzer. A little plus tab there. Also, see how these pins aren't the same length? The long pin is almost always, it's always the positive. And note it's marked positive, negative here. So it is polarized. Those pins don't bend. Take that off later. And our battery. Okay, this has, this is our battery holder. Now it looks like it's got three pins, but it really only has two, these two sides. The middle one doesn't go through the board. So the battery slides in this way, and this is the stop. So we'll get it in there, sets right in there. Now this is gonna get hot. <laughs> so tack quick, quick. Where's the second pin? Oh, it's down here. Lost track. Get it tacked in quick, because that other side's gonna get H-O-T. Real quick. Told you. Could probably use a piece of blue tape to hold that on while I pack it, but. Too much of a manly man for something like that. Okay. Oh, 
battery doohickey. Not going to work while it's in the stand. Neither of these two buttons. So we'll do that. Every time I move that, it's the time. It's not the time. Okay. This has three pins. Front, middle, and side. It's pretty obvious where they go. We can just set that on that cardboard there. And the little buttons. Again, they have these have four front and two back. Should fit right in there. Oh, and they fit good and snug too. Works. Okay, now the fun part. Save the chips for last. Don't want them to heat them up. Note, this is important. You have four LEDs. It shows where the spots are. The third one, the spot is reversed. So it goes dot down. Dot down, dot up, dot down. This makes your colon, plus this number will be upside down because it, it's calculated for that. So, so you know, down, down, up, down. These are a pain. They are very tightly fit in here. And if you Put them in at an angle, they'll never get those top pins in. So you have to put them in. Here's what I do. This helps a little bit. Just take some long needle nose pliers and grab all the pins at once and twist just that much. Okay. Dots down, dots down. Put it in there. And then you get it in straight and you push it in. And then, after each one of these, what the cuss? Ooh. Yeah, we gotta cut these pins off because it's, it's not good. I thought we could leave that nonsense on there, but.
Yeah, burned myself. Grab down here. That's that's the hot part. <laughs> So we're coming up on an hour here. Uh, almost done. This is number three. Dot up. Grab the pins. Just that much. I'm telling you right there, that little bend makes all the difference in the world. That's all the soldering. That's all she wrote. I just need to get these chips on. This is the worst. Okay, remember the notch? Notch is here. There's a little notch in the pin. You see that? In the chip, there's a little notch there. The notch goes with the notch. Now look. Down there. Those are all bent out this way. It ain't going to fit. See, it'll do that. Go outside. So I have a little chip doohickey. You can do this manually. This kind of straightens them out a little bit. Get some general. They're, they make an actual tool for this. But I don't have it. This is where the anger begins to flow. I'll zoom out a little bit so I'm not. Constantly jumping out. Ah, whoa! It was way quicker. That bending, just like I did with the ice, the, with the display, that helped. This one's not so bad usually. Hmm. Got a little bit of an angle on it. I didn't notice that though. Well, let's see if we can do it without it. Yeah, there's enough pins you can just feed that one into their fingers. Push it in solid. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. CR 1220 battery that goes in this. These are impossible to find at stores. You can order them on Amazon. This I got two of these for like three dollars or something. But they do have CR 1216 or 18 something like that. It's just less uh, less amperage, less capacity. 
This is 40 milliamp hours, those are less milliamp hours. But it's the same size around, just a little thinner. So you can use those in here. It'll work, it just won't last as long. Uh, the problem is, if you buy that at Walmart, it'll be $3 for one battery. Uh, 3 to $4 for one battery. I don't know what they're meant for normally, but uh, yeah. So it's a CR1220 3-volt battery, and it just slides in there like, yay. Mm. <laughs> there we go. Slides right in there. It's a little tight. Make sure this thing works, or as Ave would say, make sure it chooches. Does she chooch? We are lacking the chooch here. There we go. Ugh. All right. Remember how I said, see how that's barely readable? And now it's readable? It does some random shit when you first plug it in. So, if I remember right... Anyway, she works. Let's get the case built. Case is these laser cut I would assume acrylic pieces and the easiest way to peel this is to get that with a knife and then peel it off and you've got both sides to do I'm gonna spare you this I'm gonna drink another beer or get another beer and uh, peel all these off and then I'll be back there's no reason for you to watch all this Okay. I'm going to get a Kleenex or some soft cloth to wipe your grubby fingerprints off is a good idea. So have that beside you. Here's the deal. Here's how this is done, kids. And it's a giant pain in the butt. That you'll see holes in the edges of some of these, and you'll see keyways. These little cross cuts. See that? That's how it's put together. This piece with the flat bottom is the front. And this piece with just the cross is the bottom. It goes in just like that. Here's the power side. It goes in here like this, and it may or may not be upside down, I don't know. <laughs> you have to kind of fit this in first and see if it's in the right place. And then... No, well, yeah, there's only one way that one can go, so that's the right way. So here's what you do. You 
put that in. Here's the easiest way to do it. Put the bottom in, put the front on, and this side and kind of hold it there. Then put your clock face in. And you want to hold that clock there because that'll keep the nut from falling through. Infuriating. So what you do is you put a nut in there. Like that. And you put your screw in here through the hole. Grab that nut and give it a little twist. That holds that piece together. Before you put the second side on, you want to get this material here. You want to figure out how much you need to cut off it. And it goes to about here. Alright, now let's cut that. Make it slightly smaller than I think it should be. You could probably use a straight edge or something for this, but I'm doing it freehand. And it's pretty good. Give that a good wipe. Ah, take your sticker off, your speaker, especially if you want to use it. If you don't, it wouldn't hurt to leave it on. All right, here's where shit gets real. Notice the hole in this one? That goes over the speaker. Here's one of those situations where getting the nut in is a pain. The piste de resistance. I think that means the final piece. This one sucks because you can drop the nut right in there. I want to choke a baby.
Okay, anyway, that's the build. We'll get to the programming of this, uh, set the time and temperature and all that stuff in a minute. Okay, this is the official one. The date, the, the date. Oh, it is Friday. Ah, oh, whatever. Oh. Okay, so I figured out what was wrong. I had to test. Uh, the battery was, it wasn't in right. I had to resolder that. Uh, it, it wasn't a good solder joint, so my bad. Here's how you set it. And it's goofy. You power it on, and it's going to do some weird shit. Hold both buttons at the same time for five seconds. One, three, four, five. It should wig out. Say 759, then release it. Now it's going to beep and change to 8. Stop. Holy shit. Okay, now hit the function button. And an hour will blink. This is the time that you want. And we're at zero right now. So you hit the, there's the two buttons on the side. The top is function, the bottom is adjust. Uh, sh zero. So it's midnight. Hit the function button again. To adjust the minutes, and we're at 17. Until you've done that clear, you'll get those weird symbols on the screen and stuff. Hit this. Uh, this is the alarm. We'll go through that. And notice it stops. So this uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, and 4. 4 is on, that means the alarm is on. So I'm going to hit that to adjust it and turn it off. This is interesting. This is the hourly chime. So on the hour, between 8 a.m. and 20 p.m., which is... Eight, right? So eight a.m. and eight p.m. on the hour, it'll beep like an ass. Uh, just go ahead and set it however you feel, eight to eight, and then it stops beeping here. This point here, point three. If you hit the adjust, it turns off. It ain't gonna do it now. So yay. And now we're back to the time set. Here's the thing. There's more to it. Notice it's 26 degrees Celsius. This is actually set right, but to set the the temperature, the date, and the day of the week, we hit the plus key. This is where you can adjust the temperature. But you adjust it with the top button and it's 26 Celsius. Now, uh, this is the date, the month, which is actually August, yes. Ah. Hit that, hit that again. Uh, what, what is it, it's actually 16th, 17th. Okay, and then if we hit function, uh, when it stops blinking, now we hit the plus key, and we go to the day of the week. I do Sunday as zero, uh, is it one or? Pain in the ass. This is like the worst thing ever. Okay, eight seventeen. Fine. Day of the week. All right, make it blink. Okay, so the first day of the week on my calendar is Sunday. 
for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it's Friday. That's the sixth day of the week. Here we go. it does is it displays the time for 45 seconds, the temperature for 5 seconds, date for 5 seconds, and the day of week for 5 seconds. So, there we go. Got her working. The key is, you can start setting it and stuff before you've done this press the two keys nonsense. Because if you don't do that, it just weird shit happens. It clears the memory when you do that. So you, you do need to do the, the, the clearing function or weird shit happens. So that battery may have been fine, I don't know, but I resoldered it just to make sure. Happy, uh, happy clock making. <laughs> it's, it's actually a pretty fun project. And you'll see here by the time that was two hours, and that was with me screwing around writing this and uh, trying to fix the solder thing because I forgot it may just need it to be reset. Um, took me an hour and a half. It'll probably take you two hours because you haven't done it before, right? But for $8.93, uh, worth two hours of entertainment for me. And you get a semi-crappy clock that has a Celsius thermometer, which I don't understand what Celsius means. I have to look it up. And, uh... Whatever. It is what it is. Check it out. Have a good day. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Up there. Or wherever the subscribe button is. Comment if you want. Uh, comments are always great. And uh, I've got a, a bunch more projects coming uh, up for you. I've uh, bought some Arduinos. Uh, I'm going to do some uh, sensor projects. So some IoT sorts of things. I bought uh, uh, some other little kits including a ham radio kit. I know I've got videos of me building a Rockmite. Well, I've got... Um, stuff to build a pixie 2 which is a tiny little tiny little radio uh, and a bunch of other stuff coming in so keep tuned subscribe so you can get those things and comment and I'll try and answer any questions you have and have a great day